Welcome to 15 Base Essential Tips. Number one, multiple stations. You want to make sure that you have the ability to make multiple stations. Okay, put them facing away from each other though, not towards because then it, the pals will just get stuck. So, we're going to talk about why very shortly. Why multiple stations? So, Technically, what happens is that pals will end up mining and treeing and washing and crushing or whatever things and then it gets to a point where it maxes out. That's known as overflow. You do not want that to happen because then they won't be producing anything anymore. So you just want to keep it going. When they're done with one station, they go to the next and then the next and then the next and then when you're done with your stuff, you go over to the base, collect it, store it, and then they go do their stuff again and it's a continuous process. Number two, placing storage. You want to make sure that you place storage next to um, your facilities, your appliances, your conveyor belts, your mining nodes, tree nodes, whatever. You want to make sure that they are placed not next to just one, but try to place them next to multiple. You see, we have the chest right in between the two. We're able to go boom, boom. We get to get the stone from one node, get it from the next, give a little turn, and then we place it in the chest. And you just do that for all the things that you can. This way, you minimize the amount of actions you have to do, minimize the amount of time you're over encumbered. Okay? And it's very important that you do it so that your pals can also access the storage, okay? The more chests you have available next to your um, structures, the more they're gonna be likely to deposit there. And even though you wanna have certain areas, it's, 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 it's kinda gets kinda scuffy. So, Number three, when it comes to station alignment, there is a new thing that came with the Sakurajima update. You hold down the control and you get this blue line. It travels it in a perpendicular slash parallel line towards other structures or walls and stuff. And it works very well. You can do it with every single thing, except for pals, obviously. So that's pretty much the most important part about it. When you have that done, you can't really have anything out of line, but it's not like Photoshop where they have the different station between every single interval, because that doesn't work. Number uh, three. Okay, yeah, so we're still on number three. Everything has a place, okay? You see here in about the next maybe a minute or so, we have more footage of my alignment. We have the crop fields alignment, trees alignment, mining nodes alignment, beds aligned in a certain fashion, whether it's in a nice even curve with the beds the smaller beds placed in between it you can do that how well you just change the angle it's an alignment so you can just manipulate the angle okay so you see the trees are aligned the crops are aligned everything's aligned they all have their own specific area pals don't get stuck you don't get stuck with having to pick up their stuff because they don't get stuck now it's very important that you can uh make sure that this maintains its own structure, okay? You want to make sure that everything is placed evenly as much as possible. You can do this with the beds, you know, the, the nodes. Right here on the left, I got the coal section, and it's very clean because it's like a grid. A grid just like the cities, right? And the world, they all are on a grid because that's the easy, that's how you can, you know, measure things. And it's just the most ideal. So you want to try and, you know, make use of that knowledge and replicate it. Right here we have more alignments in my um, volcanic area. We have a lot of crops all placed within each other, nice and even. Same thing on the next floor up above, we got the mining and trees. All the gathering nodes are placed in a perfect alignment in addition to the crushing. And they have it so that it's just like the same exact formation. Not, it, they are back to back so that the pals don't get stuck. You want to do it to the hot springs, you want to do it to everything that you possibly can so that the, the well pretty much the big issue is that pals do get stuck when they aren't having the right uh, pathing. So that's where you want to keep it nice and aligned. Okay, number four, finally, food box essentials. So with the new addition of the cold food box, pals are able to transport both food from a cooking unit and ingredients. Here we see it right here, and what you want to do, how you want to frame this, is that on the upper left is number one. That's what they're going to eat. Then to the right of it is what they're going to eat second, when number one is all out. And then it moves in that direction. So, 
you also want to whenever you have whenever you're gonna make food you want to make sure that they cook the food next to your ideal food box scenario right so right here and then if they don't if it's not next to a food you know unit cooking unit you want to keep it off of ingredients okay now when it comes to pathing you want to make sure that the paths are open so that not only transport pals can trap you know traverse it easily but your other pals who need to get from point a to point b because it, it just makes life a lot easier and you want life to be easy why live life hard anyways when it comes to transferring between bases we're gonna get into it i just need to teleport there real quick so when it comes to transferring uh bases what i mean is base equipment i didn't title this correctly so when it comes to base equipment Right here, I have the ingredients to produce an electric kitchen. It's all throughout my base. I don't know where the materials are, but now they're in my inventory because I said I destroyed it. Okay, you take the materials from your base, place it down, destroy it that's in your base, becomes into your inventory. You now transport yourself and your inventory to a different base. Now you can freely place those materials aka the unit that you want to build into your new base and honestly that's the best way how you do it if you ever played other games that are like this like i played soul mask and it's very much like it, I, it it's it's very much like it obviously i have a lot of materials but this is the general idea because you did see the materials in my base number seven sorry in my inventory number seven personal storage when it comes to personal storage you want to make sure that you have it in an ideal location that's convenient to you and outside of the pathing uh, you, you know, pathing paths, I guess, so to speak, of the pals, right? You can have your own little money cash, you can have your own junk cash, skill fruit cash, whatever. And you just want to make sure that you have it in a ideal location. Number eight, best base passives. So, best base pal passives is what I wanted to say. You want to get artisan. Artisan, artisan, artisan. Number two is obviously the work speed additionals like the serious and conceited and whatnot, but get artisan, okay? It doesn't matter what the sanity stuff, as long as you don't slot in a destroy or destructive one. Okay, so still on the same topic, nocturnal skill, new update. What happens is that the pals who are not dark, because dark pals innately have the ability to work during the night. The pals that don't, you want to slot in, try to breed a nocturnal trait onto them, and then they work at night. Number 10, base independency. So right here we have a quartz base, quartz base, the pure quartz base. Here we can mine pure quartz, and then, but what do you do with it? Well, you gotta make circuit boards. To make circuit boards, you need polymer. To, to make polymer, you need high quality pal oil. To make high quality pal oil, you need dumas. Get the boys in the ranch, they stop popping out the quality oil. Now you can make polymer. Okay, great, but what do you do now? You try to make the pure quartz into circuit boards. Boom! Number 11, pillars. Pillars, pillars, pillars are the new update for building. Build it into the ground. You can then extend your fortifications. And I'm going to have a separate video on that either on screen or later in the future. Okay, number 12, big one. Spot inactive stations. Stones are normally the ones that pals will always go to but whenever something's inactive it has no one there whenever no one's there it means that it's overflown you do not want that when things are overflown i said this before when things are overflown or overflowed my bad they cannot mine it they cannot treat it they cannot take they cannot do anything okay so you want to make sure that you grab that stuff store it number 13 manage the pal sanity you don't have to go to every single pal and feed them a salad or some high quality sanity recovering food just pop down the high quality the pal the lab the springs okay level 9 level 31 next 14 benches versus conveyor belts so the only times you would ever want to use a bench is if you want to pop out a bunch of like nails sulfur anything that's individually crafted so that you can have multiple pals do one at a time because the conveyor belts can only handle the cer the maximum amount that the benches can handle so more benches more materials Okay, number 15, acceptance, okay? So, there's there's no rush in the game, okay? Look at this. I am going to waste as many balls as I want. Boom, 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 boom. And they're not going to hit anyone. With the added increase of pals and bases, you're going to generate a lot of stuff. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Jess. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace!